Let us recite the psalm, alternating verses. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. Then I call upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray you, save my life. for my sake, 
and for the sake of the gospel, will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us join together reciting Canticle L, alternating at the asterisk. Though in the form of God, Christ Jesus did not claim to be the quality of God, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and he was born in human likeness. Being found in human form, he humbled himself, and he became obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him, and given him the name of love every day. That at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. In heaven and on earth and on the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is for the glory of God the Father. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, a world without end. if anyone would be able and willing to guest or lay preach today in the absence of Pastor Liz, I said, sure, you know, I'm already doing a bunch of church stuff this weekend. What's one more thing? That being said, I had not read the gospel in advance, and I'm not sure I would have said yes had I read the gospel in advance. So he, I said, can you forward me the readings? So he forwards me the readings, and I look at it and go, what am I going to say about this? Um, I had a chance to chat a bit with Walter, but then I also had a chance to talk with a number of people yesterday during our annual fall diocesan retreat. Um, some of you know that I have the opportunity to be secretary of the convention. One of the things I do is a lot of work with diocesan council. and helped facilitate a retreat yesterday where we talked about budget and really exciting things such as strategy, budget strategy, mission, all those good things. Um, and it was a real opportunity to reflect a little bit on this gospel. So for today, I'm going to focus on discipleship. To me, this gospel is a call to discipleship. It's a call for us to live the life of Christ and to bring the light of Christ into our world. That message of discipleship that Jesus is giving his followers is one that sacrifice and courage are going to be needed. Does that apply in our modern world? I think it does. It might not look the same as it did in the time of Jesus, in the, the decades that followed Jesus' But I do believe that it takes courage, it takes sacrifice, it takes wisdom to live a life of discipleship. So over the last 48 hours, I've been thinking about different examples of this. And I've come up with, I think, three examples of in our modern life how we're called to discipleship, but we also need to be mindful and aware that it does take courage and sacrifice. So the first thing, is about service and showing up. We're all here today. We also have busy bees across the way in the parish hall getting ready to host a special brunch at the end of our summer. We have members of the vestry here. We have people who are committed to being here showing up every week as a choir. There are so many things that are competing with our time, our job, our work, how many of us like having a quiet Sunday, right? But we continue to show up. We continue to live that commitment to being able 
to come to church, to be a community as a church, and to also give of our time, talent, and treasure. The choir is definitely giving of their talent, as are the Busy Bees cooking. But we also give of our time when we serve on committees, when we make fundraisers happen. And certainly, in our pledging, we give of our treasure. These are the things that allow us to today live the gospel life, but it also gives the space for us to have a church for the future, for future generations. So just like our parents and our grandparents did that, we're doing that here. Another way, the second example I thought of was evangelism. And that's that link. And I, I, I think that's my new practice whenever I have a chance to either give a stewardship minute or um, lay, give, give a lay homily. One of the things that I'd like to bring up is evangelism. And evangelism, evangelism is showing our discipleship. Evangelism is living into the call to give sacrifice, to be courageous. How many of us are comfortable talking with other people about our faith? How many of us are comfortable when people ask, what are you doing on a Sunday? Share that. How many of us have invited someone to come and worship? So we show our love for Christ. We show our commitment to discipleship by spreading the good news. And we spread the good news both by our actions and our words. I would argue that both are equally important. We live our lives as Christ calls us to live it. We live a life of Christian charity. We also invite people. We tell our stories. You don't need to sit there and start pulling out the Bible. You can if you want. And, you know, quoting scripture. But you can certainly give that message of invitation. Give that message of invitation by sharing the impact that your life of faith, that your life of community, that your life in our church and in other spaces impacts your own life. That's what evangelism is. Evangelism is about sharing the good news, and we share it by our words and actions. So driving in today, which is why some of you saw me up there with my pen writing, driving up here, I came up with a third way that I came up with for how we're able to live that life of discipleship. And that third way is living in community. Sometimes it's easy to live in community. Sometimes it's really easy to do social things together, to meet at the coffee shop, to be on social media, to be around people who think like you, who talk like you, who have similar beliefs. That's the easy part of community. But there's a tougher part of community as well. And I think it's something that not just us here in Winthrop or in Massachusetts or the US, but really throughout the world are struggling to do. We are struggling at times to live in community, including with people that we don't agree with. And to me, part of the call of discipleship is living in community with others in a loving way, showing the love of Christ by our actions and our words. It doesn't mean that we abandon our strongly felt beliefs, but it means that we show the love of Christ to others when we're disagreeing. Or maybe don't talk about the hot topics sometimes. Sometimes it's good to talk about them, sometimes not. I know right now in many communities in Massachusetts, including Winthrop, the 3A zoning is a really hot topic. People have a lot of strong feelings about it. We know that there are other issues that, as a nation, people have some really strong thoughts on. And that's okay. But the call for us is to treat each other as children of God. The call is to be respectful to each other. That is a call that does take courage, that does take sacrifice. It's not easy. I think all of us have someone, whatever your beliefs are on any of the big hot topics right now, all of us have people that we love or care about that think differently than us. Are we being mindful to keep reaching out and showing love to other people even when we disagree? And yes, that takes courage and sacrifice. But I have some good news because again, that's what the gospel is about, good news. I have good news. 
the good news is that we're not going it alone. We do have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I think the gifts of the Holy Spirit are something that really can help us live this. I will admit, I couldn't remember all the gifts of the Holy Spirit, so I did do a double check. But the gifts of the Holy Spirit are wisdom. Man, we could all use a little bit more wisdom, right? Understanding, being able to listen to the perspective of another person. Good counsel, fortitude, sometimes having that strength to stand up for something that is absolutely something that is hateful or wrong, but also having that ability to take someone else's perspective. Knowledge, piety, right? Prayer for me is really important. Prayer is one of the things that helps me approach my life with courage. It helps me approach my life with understanding. And last but not least, one that always sounded weird to me as a kid is fear of God. And basically for me that is that I believe in something that's a lot bigger than me. I believe in God. And that belief in God helps me see that bigger perspective. So today, as we continue, maybe over the next week, I encourage everyone to think about not just all the gifts of the Holy Spirit, but perhaps to pray for courage and wisdom as we live our Christian life in our world. Thank you so much, and I will be praying for you, I will be praying for our community, and I ask your prayers for me as well. Let us stand and reaffirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended from the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you. My own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
that all of you will be anxious to hear how that goes for him. Um, we also have our fall craft fair. So who wants to talk about the fall craft fair of anyone? All right, thank you. So as usual, it's vendors coming, they rent tables, but we'd like to, I'm not sure what else we're selling, but if anybody could make cookies, package them up, three in a little package, people can mix and match. And you can come see me after, or I'm not, Ellen McNeil, I can send you her email if you want more information. So thank you. So that is coming up October 12th, which is about a month from now. And also coming up a little over a month from now is the consecration of Bishop-elect Julia Whitworth. Um, again, it was a gift yesterday to be able to spend time with her at our Diocesan Council Fall Retreat. Um, I'm excited, and I hope that that excitement is shared. One of the things I would like to do is if anyone is interested in attending the consecration, would again, October 19th, you are welcome to come, but just check in with me if you're not sure how to register, and I can explain how to register. Um, the other piece I want to share is while we, as a diocese, were the first to have um, a woman bishop, right? In the 80s, we consecrated Bishop Harris, Bishop Barbara Harris. I am excited to report that Bishop elect Julia Whitworth will be the first bishop diocesan. So the others were suffragan bishops, which is kind of like the person who's underneath the, um, the bishop diocesan. So it is a first for our diocese. Other dioceses have already had a bishop diocesan who's a woman, but it is a first for us. So if you're interested in coming to the consecration, talk with Walter or me, we can talk about how to register. Um, so I actually forget what Walter usually says at this point in time. We're going to enjoy the music of the choir while we also give our gifts of time, talent, and treasure.
Help us, O oh God, our Savior. Deliver us and forgive us our sins. Look upon your congregation. Give to your people the blessings of peace. Declare your glory among the nations. And your wonders among all peoples. Do not let the oppressed be shamed and turned away. Now never forget the lives of your poor. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you. And your favor to those who are true of heart. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. We hold before you the throne of grace, of grace, all those in need of God's abiding presence. We pray especially for Greg Russ, James Corkum, Bob Bishop, Richard Long, Edward Costella, Beth and Arlene Mitchell, Derek, Eric Delaney, Denny Sharib, Joan Kramer, Mike Monahan, Robert, Ken, Dan Kaspari, Nathan Patnow, William Goodwin, and all those who we hold in our hearts before you this day. And we also bless your holy name for all your faithful servants departed this life, in your faith and in fear, beseeching you to grant them a continual growth in your love and service. Amen. God of mercy, help us to forgive as you have forgiven us, to trust you even when hope is failing, and to take up our cross daily and follow you in your redeeming work. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Holy Wisdom, in your loving kindness, you created and restored us when we were lost. Inspire us with your truth, that we may love you with our whole minds and run to you with open hearts, through Christ our Savior. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hand in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, to the honor of your name. Amen. Let us join together in offering the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for your all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. For the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with a truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Short, and we have so little time to gladden the hearts of those 
ones who traveled away with us. So be swift to love and hasten to be kind. In the blessing of our gracious God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen. Let us join together in the recessional hymn number 522, Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken, hymn number 522. Mm -hmm.